Today we're talking about Devo. This is another income ETF similar to QYLD, XYLD, RYLD, Jeppy, and Nusi. Some of these other income funds may have a yield up to 12%, which is very enticing. But one of the trade-offs for this income is that you are giving up capital appreciation. However, the Devo ETF from Amplify ETF is a different story. Remember, I'm not a financial advisor. Any information included in this video is for informational and entertainment purposes only. It is not intended to be investment advice. In this video, we're gonna take a deep dive into the Devo ETF. By the end, you will learn why I added this income fund into my passive income portfolio. First, I'll explain what the Devo ETF fund is doing, what their goal is, and then what their strategy is. It is very unique and I kind of love it. After that, we're gonna look at the actual stocks that they have in their portfolio, which were similar to what my dividend portfolio looked like before I became a full-time options trader. Lastly, we'll talk about the dividends themselves and what the taxes look like. The Amplify CWP Enhanced Dividend Income ETF, known as Devo, aims to provide current income as its primary objective and capital appreciation as a secondary objective. To do this, Devo buys high quality, large cap companies with a history of increasing dividends and then sell covered calls against those positions. What is unique about Devo is that they are selling covered calls on individual stocks instead of the entire portfolio. This means that they are looking for opportunities where they can sell covered calls when they think it is most efficient, such as when they suspect a short-term pullback or a slow increase in stock price will happen. But they leave a majority of their stocks uncapped. They don't sell covered calls on a majority of their stocks, so the stocks are free to grow without the threat of a covered call limiting the upside potential. This means that the dividend they are paying is in fact comprised of dividends from the stocks they own, as well as the income from the options. Devo specifically states that they aim to provide income approximately two to 3% from the dividend income, and then two to 4% will come from the option premium. They are using both sources and have set up achievable goals for both streams of income. Devo's expense ratio is similar to other ETFs at just 0.55%, which is a great deal given the fact that this is definitely an actively managed ETF since they are actively seeking opportunities and not just making a passive income source by performing something you can easily replicate. So how do they choose their specific stocks to hold? As I've already stated, they focus on large cap dividend paying stocks with a history of dividend growth. As a result, most of the stocks in this ETF are part of the S&P 500. They keep their selection of stocks pretty small to at most 25 different companies. This means that the managers can focus on a small group of companies that they become experts in and, and really hone in on when to sell covered calls opportunistically. When choosing stocks to hold, they do look at balancing them across different sectors and will perhaps add more to sectors that they feel are underweighted or reduce position sizing from sectors that they might be overexposed to. Now let's talk about the Devo covered call strategy. Again, what is very unique and interesting about DBO is that they sell their covered calls on individual stocks and not the entire holding that they have or an index. All three of my other income funds that I currently have sell covered calls on either the NASDAQ 100 or the S&P 500. If you're not familiar with what a covered call is, they are a method of generating income from stock that you already own. By selling a covered call, you potentially cap your participation in that stock if the price goes up. This is why funds like Nusi give up the growth. <laughs> but Devo is only selling covered calls on a portion of their stocks so it can participate as the market goes up. When you sell a covered call, you're giving someone else the right to buy your shares at a specific price. Basically, if the price of the stock goes above that price, then they will buy the shares at the cheaper price that you must give it to them than they can get from the market. But if it doesn't go up enough to breach your strike price, then you keep the shares and the cash you receive from selling the covered call contract. Another great thing about Devo is that you can go to their website, see a list of all the holdings that they currently have. This includes the option contracts, which I think is really neat how they put that right out there in the open for you. As you can see, they currently have option contracts on only four of the stocks that are in the fund out of a potential 24 stocks. From their website, we know that they will tend to sell covered calls on 30 to 60% of the holdings. Right now, it's actually below that 30%, but that may be because implied volatility is low right now. So the amount of income from selling the covered calls is not worth the risk on selling them on those companies. If IV increases, I would suspect that they would sell more covered calls 
on a larger percentage of the holdings to generate and capture that high premium. It is tough to compare Devo to some of the other income funds because Devo gives you growth potential. Other funds may pay up to 12% a year in dividends, while Devo only pays between 5 and 6%. But when you add in the growth, it looks like Devo could be better. Since inception, Devo has returned an annualized return of 13.31%. In this chart, they also happen to show what would happen if you sold cover calls against the S&P 500. They beat it. Sorry, Nusi. Basically, what this tells me is that if you don't need the income now, this may be a better choice since this fund will continue to appreciate with the market. It appears that Devo succeeds in both making income from selling cover calls while also getting capital appreciation. Now let's talk about taxes because Uncle Sam wants this piece. <laughs> One of the first things to look at is the dividends if they are classified as return of capital. Return of capital are distributions that come from your initially investing principal. It is not taxable, but it reduces your cost basis for those shares. Basically, you only pay taxes on it once you sell the shares of the fund. With Devo, it looks like it varies greatly for each year. In 2020, the return of capital was a lot higher than it was in 2021. This is probably because in 2020, they experienced some losses, so they were able to pay out cash they collected as a return of capital which is great for dividend holders since they get to defer the taxes. Income from selling covered calls is still a short-term tax event and tax has income. So you will never see a year where Devo is 100% return of capital. Uncle Sam does in fact get something from this. <laughs> so my final thoughts, I really like what I see. First off, a lot of stocks that I had in my dividend portfolio before I became a full-time option trader are represented here. But I get the added benefit of having experts choose when to change the allocations or cycle out specific companies based on market conditions or company outlook. I don't have to be the one to go and figure it out. They'll do it for me. I love selling covered calls, but I'd only be able to do it on a few positions, which can be risky. While this fund can sell covered calls on a larger variety of stocks for more contracts, which allows them to really adjust their risk to find a good risk toward ratio. Overall, I think Devo's could be a great addition to my income portfolio. And in fact, later when I think the markets could be more bullish, I'll probably ship some of my percentage from Nusi over to Devo. But just for now, I want to have that black swan protection that Nusi gives. But maybe a year or two from now, or maybe six months. So we'll see if I change my direction. But you might see me shifting more stuff into Devo. And I think Devo is a great ETF. If you want to learn about QILD and QILG, check out this video because I go over those in this pretty good. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead, like, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys tomorrow.